We think there's kind of 600 to 700 hyperlocal websites, or at least that's how many have been defined by people who operate them. There's quite a diversity of practice though. I think by far the majority are operated by people who are non-professional journalists. No, no, I'm not a journalist. I consider myself a gossip. I'm a school playground gossip. I, uh, I'm a school playground gossip that gets involved in the PTA and makes things happen in the school, only I do it on a much bigger scale across the whole community. I've had no journalistic training whatsoever. We started the website because we felt like we needed a place to talk and all the skills that we've developed while doing it that's just come as part and parcel of it, but no training whatsoever. How can we understand why they do this? What ways are they motivated? And what ways are how they're expressing themselves changing the nature of journalistic news gathering? Castle Vale was what's called a sink estate, I guess. You know, it had a, a fearsome reputation across Birmingham. Yeah, I think that's finally reaching the culmination of that campaign, isn't it? I think especially now where mainstream media is becoming increasingly centralised, it's even more important than ever, I would say, to maintain some sort of local news service that allows people in perhaps more disadvantaged areas, such as Castle Vale, to have a voice to find out uh, information that's relevant about their community and. Uh, and these are people perhaps who aren't the activists who are going to meetings, who aren't plugged into the community network. They're just ordinary people who want to be kept informed. In some areas where we're doing research, there's been a real retreat by local press uh, to even having any form of newspaper in that area. So that obviously provides a gap for hyperlocals to fill. Port Talbot is particularly a big industrial town. It's one of those towns that for many people they just pass by it on the bypass on the M4. The traditional news organisations were shedding jobs. One of the big news organisations closed down the Port Talbot Guardian and the Neath Guardian with a week's notice. There was two major towns in South Wales amounting to a population of 140,000 that no longer had any news provision. The magnet matters. The passion was a very important point in the history and development of Port Talbot Magnet. Michael Sheen's aim was about involving the community, about giving them self-esteem again, about confidence, about putting Port Talbot and the memory of Port Talbot back on the map. And that's what news is about. It's, it's a living memory. I think there's a realisation that the digital skills needed to do these are quite a low barrier to participation. Everything we do is online first. Without the Facebook and the social networks, we would never have been able to reach the amount of people we have, mainly because the tools are free. If we just try to create a monthly newsletter of the same kind of audience, you know, four and a half thousand people on our Facebook page, 1,500 on Twitter, plus all our monthly readers on the website, it's how would we reach all those people with no budget? Well, 10 years ago, when I first started, as a journalist, I couldn't do what I do now. Uh, even even yeah, in 2003, 2004, the internet was unrecognisable as it is today. And the tools, such as WordPress and uh, faster broadband speeds, that's enabled me to become a one-man band. So, so, for example, I go out and about with a mobile phone, I can file copy from that phone to the website, I can film, I can take pictures, I, d I don't need to be a huge operation. One thing that we lack as a small charity is, is to um, have an understanding of the wider strategic context of our work because we just, we're, we're just not big enough to, to understand those dimensions, so it really helps us to have a university um, doing that work, so we've been delighted to be involved. One of the big questions that our research needs to answer is whether hyperlocal community news can fill the gap left by the retreating commercial newspaper sector. Now, our research to date shows that in some ways it can. This news is very local in its orientation. It gives a real voice to members of the community. It treats politics very seriously. One thing that we have to address in the, the next phase of our research, though, is whether hyperlocal news can play that watchdog role that we, that we need all of our news to play from time to time.